welcome back to my channel and another review here. I'm sure that you saw from the title, we are going to be reviewing Pleasing, which is a new brand on the market. This is Harry Styles' new brand, uh, Harry Styles, formerly of One Direction, in case you didn't know. Um, and it came out with, I think, two serums, four nail polishes. They now also have like a crew neck sweater. Um, and I think that's it as of filming. So I've been kind of trying to make it my thing to <laughs> review like newer brands on the market. And when I saw that Harry Styles released one, I was kind of intrigued, kind of fascinated. So I knew I had to pick these up and I noticed uh, right away, this was a very, very divisive launch. Um, I saw a lot of people on like Reddit, just on like Facebook, different kinds of forums, just comment sections on Instagram. People either really loved this or they had a lot of negative feelings towards it. And I think that's pretty common when it comes to a celebrity brand release because people do feel like this is a cash grab most of the time when celebrities release a brand and that they're not really in it. They're not really feeling the project. Um, like when Lady Gaga released House Labs with Amazon, I think it was, people really hated it because they felt like it just wasn't, it didn't really emulate her style. And so I think that people are a little bit warier of celebrity brands. So right off the bat, I wanna say, I don't have any strong feelings for or against Harry Styles. I didn't, I wasn't a One Direction fan. My little sister, however, she's been to like every single one of their concerts. Um, so it's not that I am anti One Direction. I've listened to a couple of their songs. They're, you know, they're fun, but I was never like, oh, I'm obsessed, you know, because I was just a little bit older when they got big, so I wasn't really big on the boy band scene. I also don't hate Harry Styles. Like, some people feel like you you can only love or despise something that's popular for some reason. Like, remember when Justin Bieber was big and, like, people either really loved him or they just wanted him dead for some reason. Like, there was no in-between. Nobody was like, he's fine, I guess. Same with people like the Kardashians, uh, like, a lot of big-name celebrities. People are either like, yes, they're the best, or God, I wish they could be wiped off the face of the earth. I'm very much in between. I'm just like, whatever, you know, it's fine. I think that I like some of the songs he's put out. I like um, a lot of the dresses and things that he's wearing. I think it's fun. I don't care one way or the other about Harry Styles, but I am very interested in his brand. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, the Harry Styles name isn't solely what sold me on this nail polish. I, I bought it because I thought it was cool to review a celebrity brand, but I've also done that in the past with other celebrities, so it's not really anything new here. I have no loyalty to One Direction, so hopefully his stands don't come out of the woodwork and destroy me for this video. <laughs> so the format of this video is I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of everything about the brand, like the launch and things like that. I will show you the live swatches and my swatch photos. I did do a wear test, so we'll be talking about that a little later in the video because one of you guys asked me what the wear time was. And then afterwards, I'm just gonna talk about the uh, my feelings on the brand and just answer a couple questions that I had asked, or I was asked over on Instagram. So like I said right at the beginning, this brand is called Pleasing. And just the release of the name sparked a lot of interest and criticism and things like that. I started seeing people saying like, it's too sexual. A lot of the products look sexual, um, things like that. And I really didn't see it. I, I disagreed right off the bat because I just felt like it's it, the word pleasing. It just means like, makes me happy, you know? And even he had a statement on his Instagram that said like the inspiration of the brand was just finding those little things that spark joy in everyday life. You know, it's like a pleasing thing. And just from a lot of British media that I watch, and this could just be like my perception, but I just feel like British English uses the word pleased and pleasing a lot more than American English. Like I'll usually say like, oh, that makes me happier. I'm happier, whatever. But in like just a lot of like British books and, and TV shows that I've watched, people say I'm pleased. So I didn't really think of this as a sexual thing. And even my boyfriend was like, why do Americans turn everything into a sex thing? And I was like, yeah, I agree. And I was really, you know, kind of gung-ho about defending, like, this isn't like a sex thing. And then the Instagram really betrayed me. And they went and they posted this picture. And I'm like, okay, 
what am I supposed to think? So maybe it is sexual. I don't know. I don't care. There's so much makeup out there that has a lot of these like sexy or, or vulgar or more sexual words out there that the word pleasing, I feel like that's tame in comparison. So I don't know. I like the name. I do, however, think that it is hard to search. When, when I just searched like pleasing or pleasing brand, it doesn't really like their search engine optimization is very poor at this point because it wasn't automatically bringing up the, the website. And I think it's just pleasing.com. I will link it down below, but usually I forget the names of websites all the time. So I just Google it like, uh, because like sometimes they have extra words in them and I wasn't sure if it was just pleasing.com or not. So I was just like, Harry Styles pleasing. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm on my work computer. This is going to sound weird because I realized at that point it does kind of sound a little funny. But anyways, I do find their tagline really chunky as well. It's something like find your pleasing, which just, it's like, who reads that and goes, yeah, I think I will find my pleasing. Like, what does that mean? The bottles themselves, um, I thought looked really cool. Um, people say they look like something else. <laughs> I don't know. I disagree. Uh, but my mom had a perfume decanter that sat on her vanity when I was a kid and it was glass and very ornate. And when I was a kid, I loved to look at, it. I like to touch it and like lift the, the lid and smell the perfume and things like that. And they said that the inspiration for these bottles were old school perfume decanters. And I like that. I, I like that look and I just think that these are very cute. They are pleasing to look at and um, that is about where the fun ends with this brand in my opinion. I also do want to say something that something positive that I did think about this brand was they used a great deal of models for their marketing and what I mean by that is like they had different age groups, different skin tones, uh, masculine leaning, feminine leaning hands, just all sorts of different shapes and sizes to show off this brand. And I think it was really cool, especially to see the photo of the much older woman's hands, like just a very wrinkled looking hand displaying the nail polish. And it still looked so beautiful. It was so like, I don't know, riveting for me to see. And I just hope that more brands market like that. I just think it's really cool to see you don't have to have this perfectly smooth, well manicured, beautiful, like well manicured, beautiful hand. Because I think that a lot of marketing, they, they treat women like the biggest crime that they could commit is aging and like showing a wrinkle or two. And I just think it's cool that that was kind of one of the forefront marketing pictures. That was one of the first marketing photos I saw and I really, that, that really drew me in. So without further ado, cause I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk about this. Let's get into the live swatches, the swatch photos, and then I will come back and I will tell you my thoughts and answer the questions that I got over on Instagram. Okay, so the first polish we have is the matte uh, shimmer topper called Pearly Tops. And this is one that you can either wear on its own or it's supposed to be a transformative matte topper. So I'm showing it on its own first and you can see it's really hard to see on my nails. I don't know if it's just because my nails are so yellow or what, but it doesn't look great on me in particular. But I do show this swatched over the uh, pointer and ring finger on all three colors in the next three swatches. So you'll get to see that as well. Next is Perfect Pearl. Now this is the white of the collection. You can see that the shimmer is running through the bottle. And even when I apply it on that first and second coat, you can see some shimmer reflecting, but I feel like the shimmers in these are not very strong at all. And the other thing is with the white in particular, you can see it doesn't go on very opaque on that first coat. And then when we go into the second coat, you can definitely still see visible nail line, but not only that, it's not very self-leveling. It does have a little bit of patchiness, a little bit of streakiness in it, especially near my cuticle line, you can see it. And here you can kind of tell that there's like matte on that first and third finger. And then we have Granny's Pink Pearls. The uh, pearlescent reflectiveness in the bottle is a little bit harder to see in this and definitely on the nail, you can barely see it at all. This is another one that is quite sheer on the first coat. 
it goes on a little bit streaky, a little bit patchy, which um, I don't mind on a white, but like with a pink, you'd think it would be at least a little bit more opaque. You can really see my visible nail line here going in for that second coat. You can still see it a little bit if you look hard, but this one is definitely more opaque than the white, but still leaves a lot to be desired. And um, I did find the brushes were nice to work with, so that is a plus. But here is the full hand swatch, and on that first and third finger, you can see pearly tops a little bit better. And then finally, we have Inky Pearl. This is supposed to be like a very deep blue, but uh, without that shimmer top coat, it kind of just looks black. Like this is one of those so dark, you can barely tell what color it is. You know, the void swallows it up kind of a color. And you can vaguely tell there's some shimmer running through this one. I think that the only reason this one covers as well as it does is because it's such a dark color. It is, uh, like I said, pretty much black, not only in the bottle, but on the nail as well. And I like this one the best. Probably it has the best performance. And it looks the most interesting with that pearly tops on that first and third finger. Okay, so I just finished painting both hands with the um, Harry Styles Pleasing polishes. I got that hand, and then you can see this hand is glossy. They definitely look different because on this hand, I used the uh, Glisten and Glow Glossy Top Coat. And then on the other hand, I used the um, Pearly Tops Matte like shimmer topper that it comes with. And then as far as base coat, I just used Orly Bonder on both hands because that's my favorite. Um, but yeah, so this is what they look like, all fresh and brand new. It is, what, December 3rd? Um, yeah, it's December 3rd. So we'll see how long these last without any like chipping, scuffing, anything like that. Okay, so this is one full day of wear. I already have tip wear. A little bit here and it's already like chipped on the edges of my thumbs I don't know if you can see that there and I also have some lifting on this finger here but it's kind of hard to show oh there you go you can see it right there so this is only one day like I said all I did was go to the arcade and build a entertainment center and um, my boyfriend is holding the camera <laughs> and um, the the madness on the left hand doesn't even look matte anymore it looks pretty much the exact same as the right hand so this is the matte side they look mostly the same as yesterday but just a little bit of extra chipping on the thumb and of course more tip wear and then on the glossy side this nail has chipped even more the thumb chipped a little bit more and that's about it yes hello okay so this is the last day i'm wearing these um this is directly after, this is the next day after the video that I just showed you. What was that, day three? Like, this is awful. Uh, that one's just thin, but look, look at the way that this one chipped. That's trash. And this is the matte side, but to be honest, like, matte, you know? Like, these suck. The blue looks like it's mostly faded from like the vibrancy of the initial painting. My cuticles are very dry, please forgive me. And then, you know, the glossy side, uh, side of the thumbs, um, let's see, the pointer finger has a little bit here. This lifted, and even though this lifted on this side, which I showed you, focus I showed you on the first day it didn't break off it just lifted which was really weird um and then over here as you can see there was just like a weird bubble that formed under my pinky nail and then it ended up chipping when I touched it so and then you can see we've got some chipping on the other side too I didn't bend these nails at all oh my gosh you can even see it like peeling off so overall these are not great. I do not recommend them. And I am pretty disappointed, actually. I, I guess I had more expectations for these than I thought I did. So what did you guys think? Um, I certainly have a lot of thoughts just um, written down over here. 
So let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to be a little bit nitpicky. The website, while it looks nice, while it looks cool, it is really not easy to navigate. It's like, it was hard for me when, when it launched because I bought in on the pre-launch and I, um, it was shipped like the first day that the full hard launch went. I was like, I want to get these quick so I can, you know, try them out and review them faster. And when I got to the website, I was like, are these going to sell out before I can even get them? Because it was like this weird, like tiled, like stack misshapen, or not misshapen, but like different shaped, like squares and rectangles. And I was like, how do I get to the product that I want? And, you know, they only have technically nail polish and two serums at, at the time that I was shopping. And it was still so clunky to try and find what I wanted. I wonder when they expand their product line, how much harder is it going to be to find those things? And granted, they did have a sidebar and everything, but because of like the hectic nature of the website, for me, I was just like, wait, what's going on here? And then I finally found the set of four and um, it was $65 for these four nail polishes. One is a topper. The other three are, you know, full coverage creams because they're supposed to be shimmers, but these are definitely creams. Um, $65, which breaks down to $16.25 a bottle. Now you can buy two of these individually, only two. They don't sell Inky Pearl or uh, Granny's Pink Pearls individually. You, if you want these two, you have to buy the whole $65 set plus tax. Um, I get that that's like a business move to kind of force your hand, but I've never liked that. And I feel like it's just kind of skeevy. I wouldn't mind if they sold all four individually for the full price, which is $20 a piece because you can buy pearly tops and uh, perfect pearl for $20 and $20. So you could do the set of these two for 40 or you could get all four for 67. And it's just like, I, I could understand doing a discounted bundle or each one individually is the full price, but I don't really love when a brand or a business only offers a couple as the individual purchase. And then even though they're not calling these limited edition, it basically feels like a, like you have to buy this weird, like limited edition type bundle in order to get all of the products. And I think that they know that people are going to be interested. And so they will put up the extra money to buy because like, for example, my brother's girlfriend said that if she was going to buy one, she only would have wanted to buy the pink one. She can't buy the pink one because you can only get it in the four piece set. And it's like, is she going to spend $67 for one nail polish that the brand is saying is only worth 20, which also in and of itself is really insane. Like I don't, I don't understand the pricing. I, maybe the bottles look cool, but like at that point, $20 for, I, you could probably go to a Goodwill and find a really cool set of decanters for like 25 cents because you know this stuff is everywhere so let's talk about how it was shipped so mine did ship on the launch day like it said so there were no problems there it arrived fairly quickly but here's the box it came in so if you look closely it has a bit of a, a marbled design on it when i picked this up i was like why is the box so dirty because this doesn't look like a marble design at first. I was literally sitting there being like, what is all this dirt and dust? Like, that's disgusting. I'm trying not to like dox myself. Look at how thin this box is compared to the bottle. Like this is a very thin box. There is not protection in here. These came literally sitting in here like that and nothing was layered over it. There's like nothing that was layered over it or anything like that. So if this had gotten squished in transit, that's it. And you know what? I did see articles of people who had their bottles arrive destroyed. And this brand has no return policy. This is final sale. So kind of like I get that they're trying to be eco-friendly, but at the same time, like you need to protect the product. And I think that I was affected by that because my pink bottle, I couldn't even open it when I got it. Um, 
like I tried to twist it and like this this thing comes off but I was like sitting there trying to like twist the cap off and it would not come off I had to run it under hot water and it turned out polish had leaked it's all over the rim of the bottle it had leaked out and then sealed it shut and for a 65 plus tax box that shouldn't happen in my opinion i will say when you crack open this part here it does say our minimal packaging choices emphasize a light footprint and each formula adheres to a vegan cruelty free and clean principle we are continuously committed to doing better by refining and innovating our sustainability practices. The carton is 100% compostable and made with a minimum of 70% post-consumer material. Printed with soy and water-based inks, the nail polish packaging uses a cap made of 10 to 20% recycled material. And the inner cap itself, so like the one I just showed you on the pink, um, this white cap here is 100% recycled material. The brush bristles are supposed to be made from castor beans and the formula itself is biodegradable and made from sustainable plant-based solvents. And it is free of many of the chemicals that nail polishes are now typically more commonly being free of. But I like, I only saved this box to show you guys, but like this looks like crap. And I don't know if any of you have ever worked in a warehouse, but I have. My first job was packing food and drinks and stuff in a warehouse. And if you've ever worked in a warehouse or if you've ever been in a warehouse, you might know about this thing. I like to call it just, I just call it warehouse dust, but like everything is always dusty and dirty. Everything just feels a little bit gritty because all the dust and dirt from all the boxes and the packaging and people and everything moving around in the big open space it's like floating around and it kind of settles down onto stationary things, such as the products that are being packed. And every single one of these was covered in gritty, dusty, dirty warehouse dust. And again, had these been cheaper, I wouldn't care. And it's not really something, like it's not hard to handle, like you just brush it off. But for polishes that are 16 25 or $20 a bottle, depending on how you buy them. Can't you wipe them down before you send them to me? Like, geez, aren't these like, these are luxury tier prices. And I'm getting like bottom of the barrel, like Sally's beauty, you know, I just, I don't understand. Now it did come when you bought the full pack, it did come with stickers for your nails, similar to like the little Yachty, uh, the little Yachty polishes that I did earlier. Um, this year or last year I reviewed them um, so the first one you get is just like the full big like brand logo sticker which I like these I actually take these let me show you here's one I got from Maniology I literally take these stickers and I stick them to magnet paper because I like to move them around and then I stick them on my Helmers back there and it's a fun way to use a sticker without fully committing because I I like to move them around or maybe one day I'll be like I don't want stickers all over my Helmers. So if you're somebody who loves stickers like me, but has some stickers that you're just not ready to fully stick down and commit to, one thing you could do is make magnets with them. That's what I like to do. But yeah, so I will take this one and I will turn it into a magnet because I feel like I have to at this point. I've done it with every single other brand. You know, I've got the To Be Frank sticker. I've got got like a different dimensions one stuff like that so I like doing that so I will do it with those and I'm going to display these bottles but it came with these little bitty um there's like uppercase and lowercase and it's the full alphabet you get it looks like a few of every letter and you have red black and then you can't even see the white ones on camera and I it was an extra. I didn't, I don't think I, I mean, I paid for it because I paid a lot for these, but it wasn't like something that was marketed as like, you're paying for this. It just was bundled in. And the reason why I don't like these is entirely petty. I do not like serif fonts. <laughs> Isn't that the worst? Don't you just want to hit me in the face right now? I hate serif fonts. I only like sans serif fonts. I only like fonts that don't have the little tails on them. I just think that serif fonts make things look 
old and bougie and boring and I don't like that. I want crisp, clean, like Helvetica-esque, Ariel-esque fonts. Don't come at me with your Times New Roman, okay? I don't want it. I'm sure that you never thought you'd hear somebody complain about something so stupid in a nail polish video. <laughs> so another thing that I saw on the website was that they are going to be partnering with different organizations, but it didn't really necessarily say what that meant. I can't tell if they're just promoting it, if part of the sales go to whatever organization. The first organization that they're working with, it just says drop one, pleasing by Nest. And they said that they partnered with Nest, a nonprofit 501c company, um, which supports respons responsible growth and creative engagement of the artisan and maker economy to build a world of greater gender equity and economic inclusion. Now, I speak English. I can break down what that means, but it just feels like they use a lot of big, like $2 words to sound like it's good, but it doesn't actually say much of anything. It's just like, I don't know. So is the is Nest getting profits? Like that's the only place that I see it even mentioned is in the like do better subsection of their website is what it's called. And it's like, I don't see any other information about this. Maybe I'm wrong. If somebody else knows, please let me know. But usually when I see a brand say like, we're partnering with X or whatever, like, so like take Cirque, for example, I just pulled up their website because I know they do something called like do good polishes where they make a polish. And I knew in my head, I'm like, some of the money goes towards an organization of their choice. And that's what the polish is centered around. So I go to their website, I pull up the do good section. And the very first thing it says is how much they donate. They say like, we use our platform to give back to our community. 100% of the net proceeds from the do good polishes benefit causes that you care about. And then it goes through and it lists the causes. Like uh, recently they did one called Splash and that benefited the Coral Restoration Foundation. They did one called Black Magic for the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. And they tell you too exactly how much was raised and donated like the transparency is so much greater here like they are very transparent very clear they give you the dollar amount they give you the exact uh organization they're donating to and they explain what that means in full I, when i open up the do better section it just tells me who they're partnering with it gives a little blurb about them and then nothing else and i just want to know well what are you, what's better? What are you doing better? I guess I just don't know. So I would urge them to definitely update that portion of their website because uh, I don't know. I feel like I have a pretty good reading comprehension most of the time, but I just feel like I don't know what's going on with that. So the one thing that I do really like about this brand, and this is pretty much it aside from, I like the way the bottles look. Um, but the one thing that I did really like about this brand was the marketing. Um, I felt like that was really what did pull me in as somebody who generally doesn't think anything of stuff that Harry Styles puts out the marketing really drew me in because I saw it and I was like this is like the cool like gender neutral kind of carefree type of person who they're very minimalist but here and there they enjoy a small luxury and I don't know why I took that from the brand that's just kind of like the marketing that's just how I perceived it and how I looked at it and I do think that that's kind of how they're trying to market this because, you know, it's um, simple stuff, but it looks classy. It looks nice. It's something that, you know, you could leave on your vanity and it's not clunky and cluttered. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I just feel like these products aren't it. You know, they were marketed as these like shimmer pearlescent polishes, but it really wasn't there as you guys saw in my live swatches. And I just feel like it sucked. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to put that any more nicely. I just, if I knew then what I know now, I would never have bought these. I'm going to display these because, you know, I am a bit of a collector and I do think that they look cute. They look pretty. Um, but I guess what I expected was the way that these caps looked, you can kind of, whoop, I dropped one. Goodbye. 
I just kind of expected them to have that similar like look to their cap, you know, that like really swirly pearlescent finish. And you can even see in the bottle, actually maybe you can't, because it's such a subtle reflect. Oh my gosh, my nails, you guys, the peelies popped. <laughs> My bad. But um, maybe I'm just too trashy to review a brand this expensive. <laughs> um, no, but let me just hop into the questions that I got from Instagram and then I will let you guys go. So the first thing somebody asked me was, is it cruelty free or vegan? And the website says they are cruelty free, vegan, biodegradable, made with sustainable plant solvents and uh, 12 free, I think. And the outer cap, like I said, is 10 to 20% recycled material. And the inner cap is 100%. The brushes are cast ravines. The carton is recyclable. So they are definitely trying to be more sustainable. Um, I will say the bottle does feel heavy and nice and glass. But this part here is definitely plasticky. Like it definitely feels like plastic. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does kind of detract from that luxury feel. And I've had some plastics where I couldn't tell if they were glass or plastic. So I just kind of assumed that that's how this was going to be, but no, definitely got a plastic feel. Somebody asked, um, how much is in each bottle? These are 13 milliliter bottles. Like I said, 13 milliliters for $16.25. I was asked um, how the formula is. I found that the white uh, Perfect Pearl was a little bit streaky. Um, you could see some slight patches in it if you were looking hard enough. Same with the pink. The Inky Pearl, which I will now grab off the floor. Um, this one was very full coverage. I did not have any issues with this like showing light through, uh, but it's also just a really dark color. So, and then as far as the pearly tops goes, this was one that you were supposed to be able to wear on its own and it was supposed to like mattify. I did not feel like it was very mattifying. It was a very soft mat. And when I wore it on its own, my nails are so yellow that I don't think that this is really for me. The pictures I saw on the website made it look like it was gonna be subtle but you could tell you could tell there was something there but when i put it on my nails i i couldn't see anything i was asked how long it lasted on the nail but you guys saw that in my wear test the answer was not long um i had chipping i think within the first 24 hours not ideal especially for that price point and finally somebody asked me if it was worth the price and i will say absolutely a hundred percent no do not buy these. They are not worth it. If you are a Harry Styles fan and you just want to buy them as some kind of collectible merchandise, sure, that, okay, I can justify that. But if you are a nail polish lover, if you're someone who likes to do your nails with high quality nail polish and you don't mind splurging here and there, don't buy these. Don't buy these. I can give you a million more brands that you can spend your hard earned money on that are just as expensive and a million times better. And I believe I will have a review of one coming next week, but for right now, save your money, save your coin. Don't, do not buy these unless, like I said, you are just like a Harry Styles stan and you just want a collector's piece because these as nail polish, they are not what you want. Sally Hansen. You could you could get these colors from Sally Hansen at the drugstore, the, the Insta Dries and, and the Hard as Nails and all that. Those are like three to five bucks or something like that. And you would have longer wear time and just as many people would be like, oh, wow, I like your nail polish. So I just think these are so not worth it. And to be quite honest, Surprisingly, I'm disappointed. Call me naive, but I really, really wanted these to be good. I wanted them to be cool and interesting because they are so cool looking. I really do like the way the bottle looks. I know not everybody does. I do, and I wanted them to be good and like fun. And I wanted them to be the first pearlescent nail polishes that I ever found myself liking, but you, they're not even pearlescent, so. Come on, Harry. I petition for Harry Styles to personally give me my money back. That's what I have to say. So anyways, that is all I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
Let me know down below your thoughts on this brand, your thoughts on these polishes. Did you pick them up? Do you think I'm just an idiot for having done so in the first place? Um, I might be in that boat. But yeah, let me know. I really love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.